We kind of did this as a refresher last year. It ended up being one of our most popular webinars. Uh, people talked about it for a little while and uh, decided why not do it again? Maybe we'll make it like an annual event where we kind of announce some of our best features. Speaking of, we have a feature announcement today. It's still kind of in beta slash alpha, but we're excited about it. And there's a few different reasons we're excited about it. And I think you guys will like it too, because it's kind of been... It's been a topic of conversation uh, with one of our friends over at Google. So what I'll do today is that today's going to be a little bit of a refresher for people who are already Broad Street customers. It's going to be uh, a little bit of a, a demo um, so of some existing things for uh, maybe some folks who've been with us for a while and maybe they have new members on the team. Um, but there's also going to be some new stuff that you guys didn't know about too. Uh, normally our, our policy around questions is that like we wait until the end just, you know, for time's sake. But today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to keep an eye on the questions. We're going to kind of stop midway through and answer any questions that we might have um, that come up in the chat. And the reason I want to do that is that we're going to throw a lot at you today. If you've been on a Broad Street webinar before, they can be extremely informative. In fact, like maybe so informative that you're like, how do I keep track of all this stuff? So if you do have a question, just drop in the chat, me and I, uh, or Annette, will keep an eye on it. And Annette, if you want to do that, mm -hmm. or if you want to yes. stop me, just go ahead and do that. Absolutely. Um, I'll introduce And Annette we love for... questions. So everybody, please throw, your, throw us your questions. Totally, totally. And um, so officially, we'll try and uh, get this all in by like, you know, maybe the, the 145, 150 mark. For those of you who want to stay, you have the availability. Maybe you're having lunch at your desk or something like that. Um, stick around. Sometimes we run a little bit longer. We will try to end it on time. But if you do have to drop, uh, do not feel obligated. Um, we will send out the recording maybe in the next week or two. We usually like to get it edited and, uh, and sent out by then. But if you're if you're really in need of the recording, sometimes you can hit us up right afterward. From Broad Street's team, we got Tommy Cleary. Tommy is our head of customer success, so he's the guy um, dropping that last message in the chat. Tommy is Tommy at BroadStreetAds.com. It's going to be very relevant in a minute. But if there's anything you like, so something that you see today, you're already a Broad Street customer, you want it. Tommy's the guy to tell because he'll make it happen for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and drop in. I am not going to switch into presentation mode like I have in the past, do that whole full screen thing, because I kind of want to be able to drop or jump around in a few different places, right? So introduction. If you don't already know me, my name is Kenny Katzgrau. I'm the creator and CEO of Broad Street. Um, I am the publisher of Red Bank Green. Red Bank Green is a hyperlocal news operation in Red Bank, New Jersey. We're doing a lot of work on Red Bank Green. I acquired it earlier in the year, but I had been deeply involved with Red Bank Green for uh, more than 10 years. Um, and we're doing some really fun stuff. And if I have time to talk about what we're doing over there, I want to show you a, a new way of thinking about advertising. But I'll probably do that at the end. Formerly at Yahoo or Mozilla, no one sees themselves getting into advertising, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think uh, for a lot of the people who are on the call, a lot of you probably just fell into being a publisher or ad sales. Uh, it just kind of happens that way. So I'm in the same boat. Um, I'm based in Red Bank, New Jersey. And uh, most importantly, I'm the dad to two boys, Kenny, who's four years old, and Will, uh, who's two years old. And for the first time in a long time, we have Annette Batson, ad sales extraordinaire, like coach, for Broad Street customers, ad sales director for you know one of the greatest hyperlocals ever, um, BaristaNet. Thank you so much for joining us, Annette. You're very welcome. Ha always happy to be here and uh, contribute whatever um, information I can to help other people in my situation. Um, I am originally from California. I have a master's in public health. And like Kenny said, no one ever thinks about going to, they're going to be in advertising or, or sales. But you know what, after going through several reincarnations and careers myself, it, it all comes down to uh, connections with people and um, persuasion of, of your ideas if you think it's a good fit for them. And that's what sales and advertising to me is. Um, I started uh, when I moved to Montclair. Uh, I'm a mom and I have uh, I moved here with young children. They're all now millennials, <laughs> age 25, three, age 25, 28 and 30. I was um, attracted to work as a independent consultant and salesperson and journalist with uh, BaristaNet, which was a new emerging online news uh, format. And um, I jumped in with two feet, never having done it before, but having had a background in, in public health, marketing, 
uh, sales and uh, medical um, relations, public relations, uh, it all seemed, and tourism, it all kind of meshed together and yeah. I reinvented, yet reinvented myself. So fast forward 20 years later, uh, Barista had incredible success and we merged with the local print not-for-profit paper called the Montclair Local last May, uh, which is pretty crazy because they actually realized uh, the print model is not a financially you know, sustainable model, and they wanted to do a digital version, but why reinvent the wheel and have two digital newspapers, you know, in, in our town. So they, we merged and basically brought our digital expertise to the print um, people. And voila, I am now sales director for Montclair Local. Perfect. So uh, thank you for that. Nat. And you touched on something that I think all of us can probably even if we weren't, we didn't really go into ad sales on purpose, like we usually draw on something in our background that'll help us with that, if not make us really good at it. So a little bit about Broad Street, right? If you don't know what Broad Street is, Broad Street is an ad manager. It's similar to Google Ad Manager. It can replace Google Ad Manager or it can plug into Google Ad Manager. So you can think of Broadsheet as an ad manager that is very, very sales focused. But the reason we do what we do is that we exist to help our publishers impress their advertisers. I want to make sure that our publishers look better than anyone else when it comes to sales, right? And it's not just the sales piece. It's also delivering performance. It's delivering renew, um, you know, getting that renewal. Um, it's being able to service your clients in a way that nobody else can. And that's kind of what we do, what we do. Just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today quick Broad Street story, like where it all started, because we never really strayed very far from our roots. The reason that we do what we do today is very uh, related to our origin story. Talk about the service, um, talk about impressing clients, delivering great performance, renewals, some secret features that you guys might not know about and um, probably don't. And then importantly, a feature announcement, this universal analytics. I know a lot of you have had, there's been some discussion around Google Analytics 4. We have a very useful, simplified analytics feature currently in testing. I'll give you a preview. And if you want to use it, you're certainly welcome to uh, ask Tommy to set you up with it. So I'm going to show you guys that at the end. And I think um, it could be useful not just from, for like general website analytics, but also uh, if you're someone who does sponsored content reporting or something like that, we kind of built around the sales use cases that we are aware of. So the most important things to know a lot of times are the things that we don't know. What we do know today is okay, but it's always the things that we don't know that could really open up opportunity for us or impact us in a way that's gonna like push us forward or some other direction. So if you find something that you didn't know and you're like, why don't I do that? Because one of the things that we hear on calls all the time is like, I didn't know you guys do that. And that is something that I would like to solve. Um, you know, we put out, we're, we're better at building features than we are at telling people about them, right? So today's an opportunity to tell everyone. But if you go to broadstreetads.com slash wins, right, you're going to be taken to a worksheet. And this is kind of the same worksheet that we use for onboarding customers, right? What you can do is kind of like just keep track of the wins that uh, or the things that you would like implemented. And Tommy's going to be your guy to make it happen. So you're going to make some notes here. At the end, you can share it with Tommy. You can also schedule a call with him. Uh, here's his meeting link. So it's embedded right inside this um, uh, right inside this document here. And so just make some notes there. It'll make it really easy for Tommy to make sure that everything's kept track of. And then we got you guys all set up. So Broad Street Story, 2012. Uh, this guy, Mom, uh, Stu, who is the owner of Mammoth Meats, which is a great name for anybody who owns a meat shop. Um, he was up for renewal. And John Ward, who's the publisher, came to Stu and said, hey, uh, Stu, would you like to renew? He had been an advertiser for five years. And Stu said, no, right? Not exactly like that, but Stu didn't renew. And he said, the reason that uh, I'm not going to renew is that I post all of my lunch specials on Facebook. That's kind of all I need to do, right? And so a lot of people who've been in publishing or ad sales have heard this before. Oh, we do our marketing on social media, something like that. I have a little bit to say about that uh, at the end, a um, little surprising. So, so Stu said, I do my marketing on social media and John Ward had an idea. Um, he said, well, what if we take Stu's lunch special and what if we could bake it into an ad on the website on Red Bank Green? So every day someone went to redbankgreen.com and his lunch special would be right there. Well, he got in touch with a local nerd. That was me. Um, this was me at Yahoo uh, next to my eventual co-founder for Broad Street, John Carpezzi. 
And we built out this ad format, which as Stu's chattering face on it is still live on the website to this day, right? So um, every day, Stu would post his lunch special, which by the way, he wasn't a fantastic photographer. Um, sometimes we'd ha run a format where his pictures would come in, but they didn't look so hot because uh, it's all fluorescent lighting in there and well, he's not a photographer, but his lunch special would be in there every day. And he loved it. And he wasn't just an advertiser for like another six months. He was an advertiser for the next 10 years. He's still a paying client to this day. I took over Red Bank Green, still an advertiser for Red Bank Green, right? So some lessons that came out of it, um, we did something cool and it saved a customer. Readers like the ad and still talk about it to this day. I was on the phone with uh, the owner of a brewing company we'll talk about in a bit. And he said, listen, I love what you guys do. I love Stu's ad. Right. I he's like, I think it's hilarious, his chattering face. And I'm like, that's so funny. Like people take took notice of it. And nobody else does this kind of thing. Nobody else brings a whole lot of creativity or innovation to digital advertising. And it turns out, especially today, that more people see his posts on Red Bank Green than they do on Facebook itself. So, you know, a few thousand people will see it on Red Bank Green in a given day, but on Facebook. He might have like 2000 likes on Facebook as Facebook page and not a lot of people say it. So kind of got us to this place where like, were we taking something for granted about ad sales? We had just, you know, we thought originally we were just selling banner ads. That's all there was, you know, you kind of launch the site, you do the news and like people want to have their ads around that. Right. But then I thought like, do I have a duty to think about what would be fun and effective to bring that advertiser into the community to really make them like that, that ad is less, it's informational, but it also brings like Stu's personality out too. And was I thinking about ad sales all wrong? So it got me along this line of thinking where we've got this, like this partnership oriented sales, this transactional sales. And what Annette was talking about in the beginning where you're like really working with a client to understand how you can help them. That's partnership. But the way that sales have been done historically is very, very transactional. So let's talk about transactional sales. Transactional sales is kind of like a vending machine or a franchise. Like you give us the money, we give you the product, right? Super optimized for efficiency, scale, low pricing, one size fits all. It's not optimized toward helping the end customer, like, you know, get that perfect fit. Newspapers treated sales like this historically, um, with some exceptions, but generally they had ad space. If you wanted a placement in the paper, you filled out an insertion order. Um, sent in the creatives, and that was that. Then Facebook and Google came along, and they did that way better than the newspaper industry ever did, right? Cheaper, better targeted, and it kind of leaves you in a place where it's just like, is that is there any way around that? Well, of course, there's the partnership model of sales. And then Kenny came around and did it better than Google, I might add. <laughs> right. Thank you, Annette. Well, I think it's not even, it's not even the broad street, the product is important. I break it down to three things, partnership, product, and performance, right? So the partnership piece is where small publishers can really excel because there is no human in that relationship between someone using Google AdWords and, you know, buying advertising. There's no human in the relationship with someone uh, boosting a post on Facebook. And a lot of small business owners try that at some point. You know, when they when they finally get a breather from, you know, running their business every day, when they finally get a breather, sometimes they try it, they don't really see the results, they don't have anyone to talk to, they can't figure out what's going on, they don't do it again. So um, I heard a great quote from the CEO of Monday.com, I was at a conference in the Bay Area last week, and they said, I realized the product that a lot of people wanted, or that people wanted to, uh, a lot of the time was someone to talk to. I've noticed that the biggest sales I've seen uh, in the public... Uh, you know, in, in the publishing industry, the biggest ad sales are, there's usually a lot of partnership and handholding taking place. Figuring out where they want to go for any of, any of those who've been on our uh, webinar last year, the intersection with Lariel, she said, um, basically figuring out where some, someone is today and taking them to where they want to go, thinking about sales that way. Because you have someone who would, who would like to market, they know they should market their business, but they can't find the time to do it. They don't know how to do it right. And if you can be that person to kind of like figure out what it is that they're trying to do, like that's going to position you really well as the person that they spend their money with. So guiding them towards success. And that's Trans something that they won't get with Google. Right. No, totally. Yeah. We don't want them to. You, to you add the personal dynamic and the interest, personal interest in what they want to accomplish and 
problem solve for them because a lot of times they don't even know what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. Right. So that's a big part of what you can do that the big guys can't do. There's no human in that relationship. Um, but on the product side, don't be stuck doing the same thing as everyone else. And that's kind of why Broad Street does what it does. We want our customers to stand out. We want them to have something different. We want them to be able to deliver performance. Everyone and their brother is selling banner ads. We need, we want, yes, we serve banner ads too, but like we want you to have something different in your media kit to really stand out. So there are three big reasons customers come to Broad Street. All-star support. Y'all know Tiffany, y'all know Tommy, Caitlin, um, support team, um, probably I'd say the best among SaaS companies that I know of, even outside of our industry. Like we really, really care about our customers, very partnership focused, most knowledgeable in the industry and like little things that you need. Oh, you're moving to a new uh, hosting provider and you need your site set up again. We'll add the ad units. We'll set you up with mobile optimization again. Um, oh, you need a custom ad format. We'll do that. Your advertiser wants a tweak to that ad format. We'll take care of it. These are all things that our customers have learned not to expect from the average support team. Right. So when they find out that Broad Street will accommodate them as they move to a new theme, they're totally surprised. It's amazing. I didn't know you guys had to do that, that you guys would do that. I thought I had to hire a developer. Second reason is the ad format. So we're going to spend some time on this. You can think of our ad formats as replacements or drop in replacements for standard banner ads. The ad formats are there to make your media kit interesting. Right. I will not go to a sales meeting if I don't have a spec ad or something interesting to show um, our uh, potential customer. Um, you can flip the sales process. So instead of like sending someone a spec, kind of setting yourself apart, like after they agree to the sale, you can go to the sales meeting with something in hand. I'll show you how I did that recently to get one of the biggest advertisers at Red Bank Green on board. Deliver better performance, differentiate, build a moat. Like it's important to have something that you can do that nobody else can do. And really, if you're a bigger publisher, sometimes you just need to get the sales team excited. Like if they're selling the same thing over and over, like what's changing? Like it's nice when you equip them with something that they can go into a sales meeting with, like this is going to knock them over. Like this is gonna be good. I love going into a sales meeting when I know, it's like it's like when you did a really good job on your homework and like you, you want your, your teacher to, you know, say something nice. I don't know, I, I had that. So if you can get your sales team excited to sell, right? That's, it's a game changer. Reporting. Website, email, like we talk to a lot of publishers and they're like, I go to like five different systems to generate a report for our clients. We pull it all into one place. It's automated client ready. You guys are going to see that. If you guys have not already, I kind of publicized it in a um, somewhat infamous way. Our ebook, 10 Advantages, which I used to promote on pretty much uh, every webinar, was part of um, the conversation in the subpoena that we got from the Department of Justice and Google. Uh, all's good there, but they had asked questions for uh, strategy documents explaining the strengths, weaknesses of ad tech providers, the benefits of using custom ad formats. It was 10 advantages. So Google's antitrust defense team is in fact, uh, or did in fact read 10 advantages. These are your biggest advantages in sales in a world competing with Google and Meta. Let's say it. All right. We've got, we've, gotten through the slide portion let's actually jump into the fun stuff so the second big reason apart you know after that service and support is our library of ad format so we started building ad formats because we didn't want our customers only selling standard banner ads and it's amazing we have lots of customers um, a, a fair number of them who still use broad street just to serve standard banners right and it's kind of like have a, having access to like a gym and just like going on the treadmill, right? And we all know like people who just pop into the gym like 20 minutes on the treadmill and then like, that's it. Like, don't do that. Like just pick one or two or maybe three of your favorite ad formats and run them by some of your advertisers. Because sometimes a publisher will say, but like my advertisers never really asked for anything like different than a standard banner ad. That's because they don't know that anything different than a standard banner ad exists. Your advertisers, they're like thinking about their business. They're thinking about that, you know, manager who just quit. They're thinking about the next fire to put out their business. Like sometimes you bring something to the table, you can really get their interest. So I should probably ask Annette, Annette, like what are what are your, some of your favorites here? Oh my um, God. All time I, favorite, by the way. Hmm? I like how I just asked you a question and I started talking about all time favorite, <laughs> by the way, is the amazing cube. So we put that back front and center, the 3D amazing cube. It gets knocked, but it sells so well. And um, that's one of the Broad Street fan favorites. But what are yours? 
Well, first of all, I got to say that the, the Broad Street Library of Ad Templates is unparalleled anywhere in the universe. And it, if without that, I would not have had the success I had in sales because it's just given me so much flexibility to customize a response to what my customers' needs were by adapting uh, what's available in the templates. I always look for a template it, to, to um, create a spec ad that allows me to add an image, logo, and text. And there's a bunch of those that um, you can play around with. And I encourage you to go through on your spare time and play around and start making ads for yourself, for, for, for customers uh, that you know, and see what you can do. I like the... Um, the uh, instant snapshot, the ribbon ad, the fast spec, the lazy ad, the business card, um, they all have um, components that you can add to. And sometimes the clients, um, it, sh it also shows you if you look at their client's website, uh, look at you ask them for their uh, previous um, posters, flyers, as they've created, you can you can crib off of that and say, okay, well, let's re let's reconfor reconfigure that into one of my templates, which is really productive. And that shows them that you care about them, you've done your research, and you're really um, giving them something back that they already like. Mm -hmm. um, I also love the sneaker roadblock pop-outs. Um, and I often, I always try and give the customer as much information as he can um, after we've established um, his interest and need. Because invariably, I'm competing with four other different um, modes of advertising, and I want him to be equipped with everything about that he has to know about what I can offer him to make, so he can quickly make a decision. And yeah, I love the sneaker ads, the sneakers and roadblocks, um, the 3D yeah. cube. I uh, and even though the billboard is the most expensive ad we have, and hardly anyone um, can afford to buy it, I always throw that in just to show them some bells and whistles about what we can do. It's right. very impressive. Yeah, the three best selling of all time, um, just so everyone can take a quick look. Um, Gary from Sweetwater Now, now um, fantastic. He passed away a few years ago, but um, uh, Gary was a very forward thinking guy. And, um, you know, we in the industry, like, you know, owe a lot to Gary. And uh, I certainly do because I spent a lot of time, like talking about Broad Street, um, just like, you know, the things that we need to build out, just like features that we should add. And he was kind of more or less the inventor of this billboard, or at least a, the one of the first to bring it to us. He said, hey, guys, can you build this for us? And Sweetwater now has run this, you know, for years in this spot. And uh, we opened it up to, for our customers to use. And a lot of them, um, the lowest I've ever seen it sold for was about like seven fifty a month. And I believe Whistler Chevy is at a... a much higher rate than that. So I think they rotate about seven advertisers through here, about seven creatives. So each time you flip around, but that's just a view of the billboard. Um, we have some customers who like come specifically for that billboard or the cube or one of those. Um, but the amazing cube, best selling of all time, uh, billboard close second. And believe it or not, like the, the, it's kind of a tie between the real estate unit and this like healthcare unit right here, we see a lot of these built. Um, the sneaker is really, really popular too. Like Annette said, that slides up from the bottom. Yeah, and, so, and keep in mind uh, also uh, in that um, medical one with the Mayo Clinic, you can use it for anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be medical. It, it could be any business. You put their logo up, you put their, if they have um, our, like a blog post and stuff, a bunch of blog posts they want to feature, you, you can adapt it to any, any industry and any customer you want basically. Right. So we've got a, a few ad formats on the way, but um, what we tell our customers is basically pick two to three of your favorites and work them into your media kit and bring one to the next sales meeting and see how it goes. Because what you're going to find is that you're going to find some some favorites, ones that seem to work, that seem to get a conversation going. And it's not just about the ad itself. Like this amazing cube gets like a 0 0.5, 0 0.6% click-through rate. The billboard ad gets almost a 1% click-through rate. Compare that to your standard banner ad that gets almost a 0.06% click-through rate. So you can multiply the performance that your pub, that your advertisers are uh, going to get. And just a little note on performance, by the way. I've run plenty of campaigns on Facebook, but the clicks are always inflated. So I ran a, a campaign on Facebook to promote a webinar. I ran one on a website to promote a webinar. Um, same creative. Facebook reported that I got like 600 clicks on it. And out of it, I got zero signups for the webinar. 
on my website, I got about 30 clicks and I got three signups for the webinar. So your advertisers, if they're doing any work on Facebook and uh, and with you, a lot of times they think that like, hey, you know, I'm getting getting so many clicks on Facebook, but I don't think they're converting. For you, you might actually have a higher conversion rate and a higher click through rate from real people than your uh, than your clients are getting from Facebook. So I'll talk about about that at the reporting in a bit. Hey, so, Kenny, Bruce at Potter's asking um, which of the um, ad formats perform best on mobile. I so haven't built, done that. I haven't done built, that analysis, but maybe you have. Yeah. On, on mobile, um, all of our ad formats are designed to work on mobile with the exception of like two or three. But the billboard, if we just want to take a quick look at like what that looks like on mobile. So you can see like the billboard just shrinks down. Everything scales proportionally. And then like, you know, if we have something like a, uh, a leaderboard, we'll use our real estate agent uh, as an example here. A lot of it depends on your ad, your website layout. And all and the size of the ad, I always think the bigger the better, um, even on mobile. And also, what drives clicks is content and and call to action. So right, it's so very, very subjective. Here's an example of a 728 by 90, which historically performs very poorly on a um, on a website and mobile. So we automatically convert that to a 300 by 250. So we make sure that everything can run on mobile out of the box. But in terms of what performs the best on mobile, the things that are best positioned. So it's gonna be like the billboard or it's gonna be the sneaker, which is great on mobile too. Another really popular one, especially for a short short term campaign is like the sticky note. So this is I usually like- All formats are great. Yeah, this is great because it's just text only. So we try to build our ad format so you can spec them out really quick for a sales meeting. This is what our customers do. Like I'm gonna do an example that I did uh, previously um, I did one for a Triumph Brewing. I created a, uh, a glossy gallery ad to kind of show people. I, I ask every advertiser, like, you know, this one question. I say, what are the things you hear from new customers the first time they come in? And, this, and in this case, for Triumph Brewing, he said, oh, you know what? They said they didn't know we had a full menu because it was a brewery. They didn't know that we weren't a chain. And they didn't know that I was local to the area. So I said that full menu thing that probably is keeping a lot of people from coming. So I put together a spec ad and I brought this to the meeting. I said, how about we show some of the food, we show the seating, we show all that kind of stuff in there. And we put this, did you know, Triumph Brewing as a full menu. He loved it. This isn't actually the ad he ended up running with, which happens sometimes. He already had some creatives made for another campaign. We ended up using that, but he loves this. And this is what really got his, uh, his gears going. So, the process that I use, and we're going to use Red Bank Green's account here, the process that I use for a, um, a sales meeting. So let's just say we have a meeting with a local hospital here. I say, hey, you know what? Um, I got a meeting with them tomorrow. I'm going to put together uh, a new spec ad. And what I'm going to do is search for YouTube. I'm going to create a video ad. Now, for those of you who are maybe a B2B advertiser, or maybe an advertiser locally, you like want to get a healthcare um, organization on board, check their YouTube page. So if you go to like YouTube, um, Hackensack uh, Meridian Health, you see this all the time. You go to their videos and just a few hours ago, they posted a new video right four hours ago 23 views but if you go back in time like this one was two weeks ago like 190 views 175 views 100 views they probably wanted more than that what better way to get more traction on their videos than taking one of these videos and putting it in a creative on your site so i just grabbed a you know a random video here and then what i'm going to do is say hey you know what let's uh create a youtube ad Example, I'm going to create a 970 by 250. I'm going to drop in the URL that YouTube uh, video. So we try to like make sure that number one, you don't have to be a designer. Number two, like anything that you might need uh, in terms of running the campaign, we just have available for you. So like just being able to pull in their logo, zooming, cropping, all that stuff. So you can do that right from within Broad Street. And then I could go ahead and modify some additional things about this ad, but I'm just going to go ahead and create that. 
And then we got a spec ad ready to go for the client. And what you can do is you can preview the ad as if it were live. So I can say, hey, show me what this would look like on the site as if it were live and generate a preview URL and give the client a visual. So I ended up doing it via mobile and I'd sent the client a, uh, a visual in mobile so they could see what their ad would look like. And they, they liked that in this case. Jody says, I would like to learn more about sponsor content. Absolutely, we're definitely gonna hit that. And then uh, Jim says, I have a question about the sticky note ad uh, when it's time for questions. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Jim. Our ad formats will generally get um, about three to five times higher of a click-through rate, which is really good for renewal time. So when it comes to reporting, you can of course get like the normal stats. Like you can go ahead and say, okay, how did uh, Hack and Sack Meridian Health? This is what every ad manager in the world does. It tells you how many clicks and views like an ad got. But what Broadstreet will do, and I'll show you a, uh, a real report that I generated for Red Bank Green. This was for a campaign. So like Broadstreet, we're hiring and uh, uh, we have an open role and we wanted to hire someone local in Red Bank. So we did a job posting right? Executive assist, uh, assistant. And you can say like, we got, I, I ran this in two places. I ran it on LinkedIn and I ran it on Red Bank Green. Red Bank Green, I got about 20 applications and some emails specifically referencing the ad on Red Bank Green. So I went to go take a look. I got 69 clicks on this campaign. And this is what a Broad Street report looks like. 69 clicks and a breakdown by city. You can see they're all local individuals. So one of the great things about Broad Street is that a lot of its features were just suggestions from our customers and local or B2B. And we built those in over time. So one of the suggestions from a guy named Scott in Arlington, uh, Virginia, he said, can you get the when and where each individual click took place? We built that in and we automated it. So now you can get some really detailed data that like a Facebook or a Google will not give you. So you go back to your client and say, hey, listen, these are the this is when and where each click took place. Do you get that from Facebook? Do you get that from Google? Do you know that the clicks that are being reported to you by that local agency are legitimate? So everything that a client was running with you, and even if it's sponsored content. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the sponsored content reporting. All right, so this is an example uh, shared with the permission of Will at County 10. Um, this was a piece of sponsored content he had done uh, last year. Sage West, and you can see we track the total number of reads, unique readers. If you do sponsor content for a client, publishers either don't report the numbers or they go into Google Annex Analytics and they pick those numbers out. Broadsheet will show you the total number of people who read it, read the whole thing, um, any links that were clicked within the article and exactly which links they were. In this case, there were tickets link, uh, ticket links to like go buy tickets for the event. So whether you've got a client running in MailChimp, like in your newsletter or active campaign or whatever it is, if they're running on your website, if they are running sponsored content, they're doing display banner ads, like we're going to pull it all into one place, even if you're running programmatic. So if you're running programmatic through January spring or simplify or something like that, we'll pull in the performance for your programmatic. So this is designed to save you a lot of time. A lot of times we'll talk to a publisher mm -hmm. and say, how long are you spending each month on the reporting and they say like, we hate the first two days of every month. We spend like um, probably like two full days generating reports for customers who have spent above a certain amount of money. So they won't even report back the numbers for customers who like didn't meet a certain threshold. So to make sure that every one of your clients gets reports, because remember they're getting reports from Facebook. Facebook is telling them they got an outrageous number of clicks. Want to make sure that your reports get to them. They see your numbers and they see they're real people. So customers love our reporting because it saves them a bunch of time and also provides some transparency that they can't get. Hey, Kenny, um, um, a couple else. people are asking if they can, if we can um, edit some of the information if they don't want to show it all. The, the, a couple of people are asking if you can edit the contents of this report. So if there's certain parts of it they don't want to share with them, you can you can hide the geography data. Um, so we make it pretty like uh, you know cookie cutter. But you can you can remove certain components of it, like this geography page. Sometimes like the more national publishers don't really want to show that or they're afraid if there's anything out of seas, like, I mean, overseas, it's not going to look so good. So, yeah, you can get rid of this geography piece and just have, you know, kind of like your summary page up here. And you don't have to include every single campaign and you can also uh, confine it to certain um, data uh, uh, calendar range. 
time right. frame. So on the topic of newsletters, um, Annette, you guys sell newsletters, right? Yep. Lots, right. lots of time. Uh, sometimes a client comes to me with the huge agenda of what they want to advertise, what they want to promote. And I say, this is just too much to fit on a banner ad of any kind. And you need to have like a community, you have to have a um, conversation with our, our reader community. And so we sell them on a sponsored content ad. I say the, the formula is you send me the copy, the links, the images you want included in your article, and I will um, edit, format, and send it back to you um, uh, to approve. And um, I, I enjoy doing the editing and making it more accessible. A lot of times I get the copy in narrative form, and it's very, you know, a lot of fancy prose, and we just have to make it more accessible, and, you know, bullet points, uh, subheadings, and whatnot, so that people don't lose interest and they can catch their interest on that. And then we feature that um, on the day of their choice. And it is promoted for two consecutive days on our um, daily um, news feed, and it is shared on all of our social media. And because of the way our website is formatted um, and way things are posted on a daily basis, I can, uh, with high level confidence, uh, assure them that their article will be somewhere on our homepage for at least a week or two, if not longer. And then it is searchable at Google and um, and they can find it forever on our website. And they, they like that. And then the other thing that which is really awesome to give it more shelf life, um, after it has dropped down the page and it's not as apparent, um, Kenny has uh, developed this uh, featured post promotion uh, template, which basically is um, fed by the URL of that post. And you can create an ad from that sponsored post that appears in our case on the sidebar with the title of the post, the picture, and like the first few lines. So you're actually advertising the sponsored content and that's pretty awesome. Yep. So um, yeah, we're big fans of like these like very quick, just throw them together, whether it's a video, like basically image, description, title, link. Um, because a lot of times like the thing that drives the performance of an ad a lot of times is just the photo like the photo if it's if it's food if it's a house real estate if it's like a kitchen for a kitchen contractor it just it just performs really really well and even in b2b there's usually some really good imagery that you can use that's going to get attention so back to the newsletter piece some of our customers they say that their newsletter is more in demand than their website itself um so i like to use this one even though it's a little bit older um bethesda magazine because it's one of the more complex newsletter setups that we ever did We've got the leaderboards, we've got your sidebar banners, but then we've also got native units. We did this with MailChimp. It's possible with MailChimp and ActiveCampaign, we can pull these in as part of an RSS merge and do like truly native content inside your uh, newsletter. Um, we can also do the same thing with like HubSpot and Constant Contact, but it requires like, we have to render it as an image before we deliver it. So we're working on ways to do like truly native in HubSpot. Um, we're pretty close, but MailChimp and Active Campaign, you can do some really fun things with. So the newsletter is really powerful. Let me go ahead and pop back to my report over here. Something while I'm on the topic of kind of like that native advertising, I want to go ahead and show you guys something. Something that's a little more like classified oriented. You can think of it that way. Um, this one's called Local Spotlight. And you guys have seen this. Or you may have seen something similar, but... Oh, you know what? One second. There we go. All right. So local spotlight. This was coming out of COVID. Uh, people said, hey, you know what? I'm dropping the price of my ads, but I got, you know, I'm trying to get more advertisers to make up in volume. Um, we also had situations where someone said, hey, you know what? I just have a lot of advertisers in print that I'm trying to get over to digital and I don't have space on my website for them all. Local spotlight is a unit that you're seeing right here that allows you to put as many advertisers as you want into the unit, refresh the page, it shuffles, but it's image, title, description, link, and it can be used in a lot of different ways. So some of our customers have done a roundup of all the best real estate agents and put a local spotlight unit in sometimes below a story, sometimes in the sidebar. For our magazine customers, they'll do like their top doctors. They'll put either like the nominees or the finalists or the award winners in there. So you can think of each one of these units as an individual ad with its own ad account tracking its own stats, but you can go ahead and run them all in here. So our customers, like a Broad Street subscription starts at like $2.99 a month, but like 
our customers who've used this, some of them like generate between like 30 and 60K with this unit, having them all spend like maybe a thousand for the year or adding on to their existing uh, like top docs campaign or something like that. So again, a way to get a lot of people into a small amount of space. And there are a few different views of it. There's like a leaderboard view, there's a sidebar view. Um, but this is the most common because it just fits nicely below the story. And I'm actually doing something similar for the relaunch of Red Bank Green. If I go ahead and just give you guys a quick preview of that, you can see it's very native oriented. Interactive ads, very native, um, very informational for our advertisers, but we've got our local legends unit here, which is basically a local spotlight in disguise. All right, so uh, Steve, so the reporting for that, it's still treated just like a normal ad. So Steve's asking, okay, if there's different clients for that ad um, on the page, like what does the report look like? It looks exactly like the report you saw before. You're gonna see like the spotlight unit, but it's just gonna be their report under that advertiser. It's not like they're gonna get mixed in with a bunch of other advertisers. Stacy says, is there an extra fee for that top doctor ad slot thing? So for local spotlight, it's a uh, it's $100 a month, but there's no commitment and the first two months are free. So our whole goal is to make sure that like if you ramp up, we want you to be able to make more than a hundred bucks a month, but uh, we get the first two months so you can ramp up and make sure that it's all free. So a couple other things for those of you who uh, run like newsletters or programmatic. So we built in some like uh, real integrations. So if I go ahead and just grab, uh, I'll just grab a random zone here. Oh, you know what? Let me, this is a good time. I had a, I had the ad blocker installed on purpose, right? And the reason I did that is because I want to show you this is another item that we do. If you go to boisedev.com, you go to Tucson Sentinel, Dylan Smith of Lion Publisher fame and many other things, but you can see that the ads are visible even though I have an ad blocker installed. Um, a lot of publishers are concerned about how many, uh, two things. One, how many people are getting a free ride and not seeing ads on their website? And two, worried that their clients are going to ask about like about their ad not appearing on their site because they have an ad blocker installed. So Broadstreet has something called, we've internally called it the ad block killer. The official name is just white labeling, which is much more boring. We can make your ads visible even though a user has an ad blocker installed. We have like some special tech that makes that happen. It used to cost a hundred bucks a month. Now it's 50 because we use a new provider. It costs us a lot less, but we set it up and you guys will probably get anywhere between a 20, 10 and 20% bump in traffic because now you have people who see your ads. A lot of times when people have an ad blocker installed, they're not trying to block your ads. They're trying to block like the ads on all the, you know, the business insiders and Forbes and like, you know, the NJ.coms in our area, the Gannett owned publications that are just littered with programmatic ads. They're trying to block those, not trying to block these kinds of things. So if you do, if ad blockers are an issue, you can kind of write on your sheet, ad block killer. And Tommy will go ahead and get that set up. Carol says, do people use ad blockers on mobile or just desktop? Usually just desktop because it's the easiest there, but you can install like the Brave browser on mobile, which most people don't do. Or the, the real nerds can have um, what's called Pi-hole set up at their network level. So it's a network level ad blocker. Um, the problem with that is that it also ends up blocking a lot of other things. And even YouTube is cracking down on ad blockers. So you don't really see that a whole lot. So just a few things that, uh, did I go ahead and, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna kill the ad blocker here. And then I'm gonna pop over and just show, for those of you running programmatic, um, like I said, through our friends at January Spring or something like that, just wanted to go ahead and show you a new integration. So uh, being able to like send zone code over instead of you know giving some third some third party JavaScript. So if you want to run a Broad Street zone inside Google Ad Manager, you can do that. Sometimes that's helpful for a partner or just you know somebody wants to run that creative on the Open Exchange. If you're running it through programmatic, you can make sure all your programmatic stats get brought in through our January Spring integration here. And then also, if you just want to go through straight simplify, working on one for Accelerant too, it works, but it's not officially integrated in the dashboard here. Um, same thing with our our newsletter code. So I know we're like kind of deep in the technical weeds here, but 
Um, you can pick the actual new, uh, newsletter provider, Active Campaign, Emma, MailChimp, HubSpot, Sale Through, Second Street, and uh, we'll generate the code for you there. And if you have kind of a, you have a different provider, um, there's usually a way we can work around it. Or if you're using like news packs, like newsletter plugin. So what I want to do is I want to open it up for questions at the end, but I want to show you guys first. I want to show you a new feature that you are all welcome to ask Tommy to set up for your account. Because this will not be free for non-Broadstreet customers. It'll always be free for Broadstreet customers. Um, and it came out of the conversations around Google Analytics. Um, everyone knows about the switch to GA4 and how much of a technical headache it created for a lot of publishers. And a lot of the numbers that you're looking for are just not really easy to get to anymore. So I want to go ahead and show you guys Broadstreet's um, new analytics piece, which will also be useful for anyone who's doing sponsored content, right? So this is Broadstreet Analytics, right? At a high level, um, everything on your website. So I just moved over to last month. So page views, unique readers, complete article reads, the things that like some of the things that GA used to do and some of the things that GA does not. Top cities, top pages. So like what is what was the most popular article over the last month or what was the most popular article over the last 24 hours? So everything in one page at a high level, right? So it's also in real time, so you don't have to wait like literally you can refresh the page and see the numbers go up. So if you release a big story and you really want to see what the stats are, you don't have to wait until tomorrow or 12 hours. You're going to see it right now. Um, if I go to these last 12 hours, the last 24 hours, you can see that our most popular story was a board of education meeting, a particularly controversial one. And uh, now we've got some different articles after that. Now, if you did sponsor content or I want to drill down into an article, that was kind of a pain in Google Analytics. But now you can drill down into an article. And you can imagine this could be an article or could be sponsored content. And I just send this off to the client. You can just download this as a PDF and we'll render it as a PDF for you. There you go. And ready to ship off. There are some additional things. Remember, this is still a beta. So we're still like really refining it and making it as useful as we possibly can. But um, top cities, top refers, and any links that were clicked within the article. So again, like if it's a story and about an event, how many people clicked on the tickets link? So that's really important there too. So I got everything in there. So that's Broad Street uh, Analytics. Every alternative to Google Analytics out there like costs something. It's ex you know, and it can be expensive. It can be like twenty or fifty bucks a month. Like again, for Broad Street customers absolutely free for broad street customer friends we will make it free too but officially there'll probably be some price tag for non broad street customers attached so if it's something you would like to test out talk to tommy and if it's something that you would like to make feature requests for we'd be very interested in that because it we don't want it to just be like analytics it's not just information for the publisher we want to make it sales oriented we want to make it something that helps impress your customer. And we found out through our discussions with our customers that a lot of them use it, their analytics as part of their sales pitch. They show how many people are on the site, how many people are on it right now, kind of like give that sense of like, hey, we're real, we got real readers. So it's very sales oriented analytics tool. So um, Haley, just the way that you add it, you just ask Tommy and he does it in the background. It's not like officially something that we uh, just make available uh, yet. So um, Lisa asked, can we import Google Analytics into, um, so you have old data to use? You can run this along, alongside Google Analytics. So if you think that there's gonna be something you're gonna do with Google Analytics apart from the basics, you can keep running Google Analytics. They're not mutually exclusive and they operate totally fine together. So you don't have to import data from uh, Google Analytics. And also because GA4, um, as they made that switch, they don't have any analytics from G GA3. So we wouldn't be able to get any either. Steve says, once Tommy makes analytics live, how long will it go back? Basically from the minute he makes it live. So, but the good news, Steve, I know you were on the list and we actually enabled you, I think last week or over the weekend. So you should already have some analytics to look at. All right, cool. So I'm gonna pop back into our slides. And if anybody wants to bring me back to any part of this presentation, you're absolutely welcome. Oh, one last thing. I should absolutely show this just because it's helpful. If you do not have this, we would love to set it up for you. Just if you, this is on Newshawk. 
for a mobile device, for your mobile users, your ads in your sidebar, a lot of times they go to the bottom of the page on mobile. Let's just pop into mobile on Newshawk, right? And you'll see their ads seamlessly realign themselves throughout the content. We did a pretty complex setup with Newshawk here, but the first customer that we ever set this up for got a 5x increase in click-through rate. They started out, it wasn't a great story. They're at like 0 0.02 and we're like, oh, it's really bad. And you guys have to go back for renewals with that. So um, we set them up with this. It turns out their, um, their users just weren't seeing any ads on mobile, so they weren't getting clicked. So once we did that, they got a 5x increase um, and then it became a standard part of our setup. But if you don't have that in place, let's make it happen because this is really hard to pull off with Google Ad Manager, or Ad Rotate or Ad Inserter Pro or any of those. Want to make sure that you guys just keep running your ads on every as if everybody was on a desktop computer and then we go ahead and realign them into your content according to your rules like every three paragraphs on mobile so um that's really important because we want to make sure that you go back for a renewal and you got the best stats you got the best ad formats you got the best stats and that that client has every reason to work with you and that if they end ever end up like you know entertaining the idea of working with someone else you got plenty to question them on where their ads are placed on mobile, like if their traffic is legit, that kind of stuff. So going back to our uh, presentation that we're coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to open it up for questions. Broadsheet analytics run alongside GA4, all your important stats in one place, sales oriented and article stats, and tracks all of the content on your site automatically. You don't have to do that thing that you used to do, have to do at Broadstreet, uh, install the WordPress plugin and enable a post to be tracked. and uh, now it just tracks everything. And even if you're not a WordPress user, we track that too. If you're on Metro Publisher, that used to require some extra steps. Regardless of the platform that you're on, we'll track it. Coming soon, self-serve tool, Broad Street Boost. Boost uh, your social media, uh, advertise your social media post on your website. Kind of a mix between self-serve, which we've always been kind of skeptical of, and a way to make it a little more familiar. More authority-oriented ad format. So you see the new red bank green, I'll do a, a dedicated webinar to this, but local authority right here, bringing the expertise of your agents out or of your advertisers out. We want to show that they're experts and they're real people in the community, that they're the neighbors. And even if you're in B2B and we have lots of B2B customers, we can do the same. A lot of those B2B uh, businesses are, are small companies. And advertiser stream. So the data that you see right here, this messaging is not static in a native unit, pulling in some of the social media, pulling in some of their, their static messaging, pulling in um, anything they need for that day for short term things like events, pulling that in. And lastly, some feedback. So if we go ahead and click on the uh, clap icon here, letting users give feedback to advertisers, right? So we can get a cumulative number of the people who like clapped for an ad and that number will never go down. This was again, Scott Broadbeck's idea. Um, being able to do something celebratory, like in this case, we had confetti coming down. We thought that was fun. But if you uh, if you click on that clap icon or a heart icon, we collect those over time. They never go away as long as the advertiser is with you. So if they ever think of not renewing, they're going to have to throw out their claps or their hearts. So um, again, always thinking about ways that we can make you look better than like anyone else. We want you to be impossible to beat. So that's why we do what we do. Uh, we're we're way over in it, and uh, that's my fault. So um, let's open it up to questions. And Steve, thank you. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you uh, being with us and always, you know, being very engaged and giving us some great ideas along the way. So love to have you and uh, and Coronado. So thank you, Wendy. So any questions? I'm going to scroll back through here. Annette, you still with us? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm reading through. So is Broadway everybody, still everybody wants your uh, publisher analytics ASAP? <laughs> oh yeah yeah i'm excited about that and by the way this is like oh, i tell nice. the team i was like this is a gem that we are polishing we're going to make this the best possible analytics tool for publishers one of the issues with mm -hmm. google analytics is that they cater to so many different kinds of users it's not just publishers it's like app analytics and all these other things so just like we did with the ad manager build an ad manager specifically for publishers right? Let's build analytics specifically for publishers. There are going to be things that we would do that Google Analytics would never do. So Carol says, what was that clap slash confetti feature? Suddenly my brain is going in too many directions was still directed uh, by the ad integration. Is that a particular ad unit? So that is something that I built for the new red bank green, 
right? So yes, it will come to Broad Street users, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of interesting things that we're doing. So one of the things I did, I made it so that uh, I could send a text message, and it got run through ChatGPT for autocorrection, and then posted to the new Red Bank Green. So this was the post I did, Little Kenny's exciting first day of school. I sent this from a cell phone to a special uh, number. So there's a lot that we're doing at Red Bank Green that are gonna come over to Broad Street customers soon, but clap confetti, uh, <laughs> that's fun. I love that, that's great. Yeah, wouldn't that be like just showing that to a client at a sales meeting? You know, like I think that would be something that like that would be fun, that would be totally different. Like Yelp ain't doing that. Patch isn't doing that, you know? It just brings so, so much vitality to the site too. Right. So Gary asks any AI-based tools. Um, AI creative generation is coming. So giving it, basically choosing the business inside Broad Street and regenerate um, an a, a creative based on AI. The thing is with A, it's a great, like what I call zero to one solution with AI. It never takes you zero to 10, right? You, it gives you a great starting point. But uh, as Scott, again, who has an AI generated newsletter in Arlington, Virginia, he said it comes up with some really cheesy stuff sometimes, some stuff that you could never possibly show anybody with a straight face. So it's great to get started, but we're going to build this. We are going to build that stuff in, but <laughs> thank you, Marge. She loves the confetti. Oh, That's Marge is our designer, by the way. So everything that Broad Street that looks great, it's uh, Marge gets all the credit. Go Marge. So Steve wants to know if this works on, on Substack. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I don't think so, mainly because uh, I don't think Substack lets you import a custom header script. If Substack will let you run custom JavaScript, then absolutely, because that's all you need. Um, so Stacy says, how does the mobile optimization affect the in-story serving of ads when the sidebar goes in-story on mobile? So you can... Um, you can control where those ads go on mobile. So you can say, hey, listen, our first in-story ad um, appears after the third paragraph, so start at the sixth paragraph and on. So we can be pretty specific about where ads show on mobile. So Carrie asks a question. And Carrie, if you want to just drop it in the, the chat, I'll keep an eye out for it. So Matt, on the programmatic question, we had a partnership uh, with Patch and... It was good, but our customers were not getting paid according to the terms. And there's some things that we had some some problems with. So it was a great experiment. We ran it for a year on um, the customers that were a part of it. It was an easy setup and they had access to AdX. But then we started looking at some other partners and their two partners in particular, Empower Local. They have like kind of a native video unit and um, Ad Thrive. So, or I think they're called Raptive now. So um, those are the two that we refer to. They work alongside Broad Street or plug right in. So internally, like whether we tackle the programmatic issue or just really focus on direct sales, you know, we've kind of thought about that. Patch was a was a great partner, but um, going forward, it's pretty much going to be recommendations for Empower Local or Raptive. All right. So um, the top featured, like the local will sponsored recognition or their list equals best restaurants. This is something that I have on my site for a while. Oh, I can't, okay, I think we're talking about the 417 item. All right, so this might be very similar to that. So these are just kind of like their own individual ads and they can link outward to a client site or they can link internally to a page on the publisher's site. But I think it's probably pretty close to um, uh, the locals, local sponsored recognition piece. There's a question from Lisa about getting tracking information by integrating MailChimp ads on Broad Street. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I don't actually, uh, net, like I don't see the actual question. Can you uh, like read it out loud? Yeah, we sell, Lisa Legro says, we sell ads in our newsletter. I had a phone call when you were talking about this. Can I get tracking info by integrating our MailChimp ads on Broad Street? 100%. Yeah, so you can absolutely run um, your ads through Broad Street and we will track the number of impressions and clicks. And Bill wants to know if we can set up a training on how we can do any additional formatting of ads if we need it. Example, centering an ad, logo copy. I don't know. I think that's a Tiffany question on a as needed basis, right? She can she can address uh, Tiffany. So our team will make the the adjustments if you need them, but we could probably do a how to, or at least it's probably it would probably be like a ten minute video. 
to show how to do that. It requires some CSS though. So we've mm -hmm. always made our ad formats about as cookie cutter as possible. So nobody had to be a designer or feel like they needed to be. The double-edged sword of that is that sometimes like the ad is what it is, but we can customize it with CSS. So we could do a quick video on that. Okay, and Steve Johnson has a very uh, layered uh, bunch of questions here. Is there a way there can be a generic example for every spot we have on the site that gets auto-created with our logo and simple text? Mm. <laughs> and um, related, has Broad Street considered making a media kit template where publishers can put in the ad formats they have available with all the reasons to advertise? That sounds like a sales kit that you um, need to work on for your specific uh, publication, right, Kenny? Well, well then I think uh, what Steve's touching on, I think like just making a media kit. So we do have a media kit template. So let me go. So we've got a few things here um, and I'll just drop it in the chat, but we do have a media kit template, but it doesn't speak to any ad format specifically. Um, it's kind of just like an overall media kit template. We've thought about offering a service for media kits to like design one for a customer or maybe a set of like Google slides. But um, in terms of the, so imagine a dynamic media kit that you can click on the potential advertiser can see the ad in action. Got it, okay. So we kind of like defer to our ad formats page for that if they want to see one that's live, but it is helpful to have it branded with your stuff first. Being able to automate that makes it a kind of interesting item to work through on our end. So being able to like say, okay, for this featured articles listing, how are we going to load in like the logo, the video, like what should we use for like the, the defaults here? But um, just back to this, uh, digital ad sales training. So me and Annette, actually, we, we did a series of ad sales training series in like 2020 or 2021. That's like really in depth. So it's great if you have someone that's new to ad sales and you kind of want them to uh, get a primer. And it comes with the digital media kit template, ad sales proposal template, and of course, a copy of 10 advantages. Kieran is asking if can local spotlight includes include biz logos for each participant or just text and image? My answer um, to that would be you can replace the image with the logo. Right. Yeah, I've seen that done before. It would be cool to kind of include the logo, but it would be really small. And the interesting thing about logos is that they can be horizontal, like very horizontal, or they can be like tall or square. And if you have a square logo, that would go in a nice little like circular, you know, badge right here. The problem is with like a long one, then it's just like it would be virtually unreadable. So... It's something I would like to do if we could solve that local problem or, or if everyone had a, had a square logo or circular logo. And Andrew's saying, did I see another way to serve MailChimp ads that the RSS feeds? Oh, yeah. So if we go to, all right. So our default way, I'm just going to pick a random zone here. Our default way of serving ads in the emails is via our static code but you can actually also do it via RSS. And with RSS, you can serve static uh, image ads, or you can also do, if we can find the newsletter unit, let me go ahead and just pull it up here. So with the RSS, you can also achieve things like this homes of the week listing, which was purely native. So our static code will always render images, but the RSS has the ability to do something a little more robust like this. So Steve asked about, so Steve, uh, constant contact, it doesn't work um, with because constant contact just doesn't support the RSS stuff. But you can run your, your ad units, your stand, static banner ads in constant contact. But the more robust example is something that only MailChimp or ActiveCampaign uh, uses. Now, keep in mind, I should give a shout out to Leslie at, at Newsletter Letter Glue. Um, it's not a free product, but it's a WordPress plugin that Uriah Kaiser from Potomac Local turned me on to. Word, talking about potentially integrating with each other and newsletter glue is a great way where you can like kind of build a newsletter template and like automate it and then it'll work with any email service provider you have like constant contact or mailchimp or something like that so to solve that problem where we can do some really fun stuff in a newsletter but use services that didn't traditionally support that kind of stuff newsletter glue has been great and he asked do you work with blocks of course i was just on a call with uh brad ward a couple of weeks ago, um, we work with a fair number of Blocks customers. We're talking to more than ever lately, but we work with people on Blocks, um, work with people on the Town News flavor of WordPress, the GT Excel flavor of 
WordPress for everyone who dragged themselves ashore from from that one. But uh, but yes, we do work with blocks. All right, cool. Um, let me just skim for any last questions that we might have. Lisa. All right, cool. Actually, Lisa, um, she said, Tommy, can you add analytics for the Batavian.com? I think I might have actually already added uh, or emailed Howard about that. So I think Damien is about to implement that on the site. And I think there was an email from or a chat message from somebody who said they were going to wait until the end. And I just want to make oh, sure Oh, that was that about the post-it. That was about the post-it note, I think. Oh, one thing. Uh, so Stuart Day said, Ken, did you say under client reports, if they are not good, it will not send automatically to clients? <laughs> not quite. But what I will say about those reports is that you can just have them sent to the ad sales rep so they can look it over first. Because that's always a good time if a campaign didn't perform well, you want to like, you know, preface any note to the advertiser with some potential adjustments. One of the things the ad, the reports do do, thanks to Lori Lakish and Local Life, they sort the creatives by the best for performing. So they always get the best performing ad first in that report. So um, we can thank Lori for that. One other thing that our reports do is you can also now set them to go out automatically at the end of a campaign and not just every month or every week or something like that. So automatically at the end of a campaign, I sat down with Lori last year and she said, Broad Street is so great. It saves me like half a person. <laughs> and I said, how can I make it a full person? And she's like, I don't know. So she went and she talked to somebody on her team. She said, make it so we can send out reports automatically at the end of a campaign because we do that manually. And I said, awesome. So we implemented that in the next couple of weeks. Colleen wants to know if her newsletter on the Beehive platform would be able to serve as. Um, that's a good question. I don't think we've... Like there might be something that Tommy or Tiffany ran into with Beehive. I haven't personally run into Beehive yet, but we will absolutely, Tommy, if you want to make a note and follow up on that one, I'd be inter interested to know that too, because if they support the personalization tokens that we need, then we should just add them to the dashboard. Here's someone that says, um, oh yeah, a couple of questions with regard to how we um, uh, determine our analytics and what what's what's the average, normal, excellent range. And then someone else here, um, Lisa saying, uh, Google Analytics report low because of users blockers. Uh, how does bot Broad Street Analytics work? I signed up for Fathom and noticed the numbers are slightly higher than Google. Right. Um, and anal analytics programs will definitely have different numbers because there's two things that it, one is that measurement and the method of measurement is a little bit different. But on top of that, we both block robots and we both have different definitions for what robots are. Some organizations only block known data centers. Broad Street goes a little bit further. We block like people who look like robots. So if somebody clicked on an ad like three times in a second, or like I think it's actually like uh, five times in a second or something like that, if it looks like robot activity, like we're going to stop tracking that because we don't want our customers to have reports that are all jacked up when they go back for uh, renewal. So because of that, you'll start to see some differences, but it's not usually greater than 10% of a difference. Um, Steve asked, is there one report for all advertisers? Not the PDF style, but you can certainly in our dashboard, you can go ahead and click home up here and then click on like global reporting. And you can see how like everybody's reporting on the site. See your global campaign status. Now, something I didn't mention because it's not exactly like a user facing item, but we completely overhauled our analytics system in the last year. And you're going to notice reports that used to take a while are really fast now, especially when you have uh, we have one of our customers who's probably got like a thousand campaigns running at any given time. You can run that report and um, probably get it back in a few seconds. So these are those reports. We don't have anything that's like, you know, like a fancy report for all advertisers, but these are the two reports that you can use. Hey, a couple of people are asking what are refers on sponsored content? Ah, right. So refers are basically like your Facebooks, your Twitters, like your Googles, like where did your traffic actually come from? So let's go to page 18. Boom. So here we have like our top refers, like we have 18 people came from Facebook, at least their mobile version. 12 people came from some variant of Facebook mobile. And then uh, Google through a Facebook link that was probably shared somewhere. And then uh, Twitter and then DuckDuckGo. So it refers are basically uh, where the traffic came from. In most cases, it's usually from a newsletter. It's direct um, or something like that. 
Uh, can your own site be re, uh, listed as a referrer? Uh, probably, yes. I don't see why not. In fact, it probably, it might happen naturally, but that'd be something that we could, we could double check. Yeah, I think um, when it comes to analytics, uh, refer tracking used to be a whole lot easier, but browsers have since cracked down on how much information they're gonna send to a website when it's coming from another website. So um, just for privacy reasons, and really because like ad tech has really just ruined it for everybody, or like programmatic ad tech, seeing where users are is, or have are coming from is a little bit of a privacy violation. So less browsers like Safari and Firefox are sending refer info. But you can still work around that by crafting your links with like UTM codes and things like that. Carol says, I don't think you saw my question. The Homes of the Week is a series of ad units that go into the newsletter via RSS feed, but they don't run on the actual news site. So they can run on the actual news site. In the case with Bethesda Magazine, they did run in the newsletter and they did run in a Homes of the Week unit in the sidebar. So it was actually the same exact ad format as the one you saw in Local Spotlight. These are called native ads. And when you ran a native ad inside Bethesda Magazine's newsletter, it, that's the way it showed up in their, in their newsletter sidebar. But you could also run it on their website and it had a different view. But the, the ad itself is only an image, a title, and a description, and a link. So it's just informational. It's where the ad lands that determines what it looks like. So uh, yes, it did run in, in both spots on MailChimp and the website. Does the capacity to run native ads have to be set up by Broadstreet? Not really, but it is like it is kind of a, a more involved setup. So we tend to do it for our customers because there's like there's some styling sometimes. Like if you're going to run it and you want to make sure it, it displays in a certain way, there's some styling that needs to accommodate it. So that's why we tend to do it. Scott says for sponsor content, we run an ad on our website and e newsletter promoting the article housed on our website. Can you provide metrics for both the banner? and the article we can uh, depending on the newsletter provider so if it's like mailchimp or active campaign we can do that um, and it would probably you'd probably have to move the article to a se special section of the newsletter i'm not sure if it's like baked into the like a listing of articles like uh, if it's included in a listing uh, another listing of articles but if you had it separate or had a designated spot for it and we could use that RSS integration, um, then absolutely. Okay, Constant Contact makes it makes it interesting. It's less possible on Constant Contact. You'd have to use like probably something like Newsletter Glue or something like that. Now, you could probably, just thinking about this, you could, you could actually use Broadstreet short URL format, which is kind of like a bit.ly link. So some of our customers will use this and I'm just gonna go into a random advertiser here. Um, let me see, link tracking, there we go. So we have a short URL ad format, which you can use your own domain for, but um, you could use this if you wanted to use that as the link and you could track the number of clicks on it. You wouldn't get the number of views on it though. Cool. Annette, you see anything else? Uh, so someone has has to have posted the SC on a link to SC on Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. I'm not sure I understand that. Kathy Hartzell. It's like four from the end. You see that? Someone had to have posted the or a link to sponsor content on Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. Oh, right. Yeah. So it's not, it doesn't like promote your sponsor content, but we will track the performance of that sponsor content on the site as if it were live. Or we will track that when people come to the website. I think a good example of like some other sponsored content that we serve and track, kind of like this branded content here on uh, St. Louis Magazine or um, this unit right here, we do the same thing for Chicago Parent. So if you scroll down, you'll see they have sponsor content here. Hey, they're running a sneaker and then got another unit here. So we also do this kind of sponsor content where it's just, it just blends in with the site. That's what we kind of call native advertising, but a lot of people uh, call it by a different name. Um, all right. So we're almost at the hour and a half mark. Um, so I think we're probably pretty good. But if you do have any additional questions that we didn't get to, email Tommy and we will absolutely um, 
get to those, but I want to make sure that for those of you who stuck with us, um, you can kind of get back to your desk. I really appreciate all the time that everyone took with us. And that I really appreciate you, appreciate you for sure. spending time with us today and also hopping on prior and, you know, doing all the prep stuff. Um, it's always awesome to have you and uh, sharing your expertise. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for, for hopping on. Everyone enjoy the rest of the day, the rest of the week, and I will talk to you all soon. All right. Thanks, Kenny. Right. Everyone have a great rest of your day. Absolutely. Thank you.